This is James Menzies from Truck News Magazine. Thanks for joining us today as we host the first in a series of Lunch and Learn interactive videos. Our guest today is Lloyd Verdun, president of Verdun Tarps. We're going to be talking about CSA 2010, the driver shortage, and load securement in general. If you have any questions for Lloyd at any time during the discussion or after, you can input them into the space that's provided below. Lloyd, Verdun Tarps has been providing tarping systems to the industry for quite some time. Can you tell us a little bit about the company? We started in 1986. We uh, have grown over the years. We have two locations, one in Hamilton, Ontario, and the other in Detroit, Michigan. Um, we are basically a one-stop shop for all your flatbed trucking needs. I think by now most cross-border carriers are somewhat familiar with CSA 2010. What are some of the concerns specific to flat deck carriers? Well, uh, CSA 2010 has got a uh, huge weighting towards load securement. Um, therefore, the flatbed carriers, uh, because it mainly applies to flatbed carriers, are going to be penalized a lot more so than the vans. Um, they have to make sure their loads are tied down in a specific way at a specific uh, time and, and depending on what they're carrying and it has to be in a specific uh, part of the trailer. Uh, so they will be uh, penalized a lot more. Like They can be penalized for improper tie down. They can be penalized for uh, load not in a proper position. They can even be penalized for a flag that's not in the proper place if it's an oversized load. So there's all kinds of uh, penalties for them, and the weighting of those penalties is very high. It's 10 points uh, for an insecure load, which is the highest penalty you can get. So just by the nature of the business and the visibility of that freight, flat deck carriers face greater exposure. What can they do to sort of minimize their risk under CSA 2010? Well, obviously they have to know the tie-down rules and they have to tie their load down properly. But another way of doing it is, is to get a tarping system of one kind or another. Tarping systems will um, basically put the load out of sight, and when it's out of sight, it's out of mind, same as a, a van. Um, that doesn't mean you don't tie your load down properly. Obviously, you have to make sure your load is tied down properly. But when the enforcement official is looking at your trailer as it's going through the way station or whatever, um, He'll be looking at, you know, what's the trailer look like? What's the truck look like? What's the tarping system look like? Is it in good repair? They're going to, you know, check over the whole system, the whole combination of, of things. And in that way, if it's in good repair, if everything looks good, they're going to be more apt to uh, let it go by. And this is exactly what I've been hearing from drivers. They say, you know, if I got a new truck, a new trailer, and a new tarping system, I'm going right through that scale. Whereas if I've got a 10-year-old system and a 10-year-old truck and a 10-year-old trailer, a lot of times I'm getting pulled over. Now Lloyd, as I understand it, uh, CSA 2010 isn't all about cargo securement. There are six other categories as well, including unsafe driving, fatigue driving, driver fitness, controlled substances and alcohol, vehicle maintenance, and crash indicator. So with seven categories, is it fair that cargo securement is weighted so heavily? Uh, no, it isn't. Um, the University of Michigan, they have, uh, they're doing a study at this moment. They have a few papers that have come out already and the final report is going to be in December from, from the University of Michigan. But they have found that two of the, those seven uh, categories do not, are not indicators of whether or not the guy is going to have a crash in the long run, uh, in the future. They are uh, the cargo securement category and the driver fitness categories were found to have no relevance on whether or not the driver was going to be involved in a crash sometime in the future. Uh, okay, that doesn't seem right. Is there anything that drivers or carriers can do to, to bring this to the attention of, of the FMCSA? Yes. Um, on the uh, screen, there should be a uh, a website that you can visit or you can visit uh, the Verdun Tarp website which is also up on the screen and we will have a link to uh, a website that you can place your comments um, because right now the CSA is is operating in nine test states um, and so it's not universal yet it's it's supposed to be being rolled out later this year 
to the other states, but right now they're just doing nine test states and they're still looking at revising it slightly. So if you have a lot of people commenting that, hey, uh, both drivers and carriers, because they're both affected, if they can go to these websites and put their comments in that say, hey, I've heard that the University of Michigan even has done a study on this and it, there's no uh, connection, correlation between whether a driver has an insecure load and whether he's going to have a, a crash down the line. Um, and you mentioned that drivers are affected by this as well and they will get their own rating under CSA 2010. What are some of the, the issues that are really pertinent to drivers that might not be used to being scored? Well, the drivers, yes, they are going to be rated exactly the same as the carriers are going to be rated. The ratings will not be public, I guess. Uh, the drivers will not be uh, able to look up their score as compared to somebody else. Um, and the carriers will not be able to look up the driver's score. All the information that makes up that score will be available to both the drivers and the carriers so they can figure out their score. And companies are going to use these scores to uh, figure out who they want to hire. Um, if, if a guy's got too high a score, even though the score is not on there like it would be with a carrier, they can look at each one and say, okay, this is a 10-point infraction, this is a 30-point infraction because it happened last week. Um, and they can total up his score themselves, figuring out exactly what this guy's score is, even though it's not on the, the pre-employment screening program, or PSP as they call it. So since drivers are going to be rated individually, how is that going to affect their employability? It, it might be difficult, I would assume, for them to, to be hired on by, by some carriers. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, a few weeks ago I was in Dallas at the uh, Great American Truck Show and Tommy Hodges from the ATA American Trucking Association was there uh, giving a, a chat in a seminar and he estimated that CSA 2010 is going to take 200,000 drivers out of the driver pool uh, in North America. So yes, there's going to be a lot of drivers that the score is just too high it's going to cause the companies that have it to have their score raised and therefore they'll be unemployable. They'll have to get out of the industry. So it would seem to me that CSA 2010 is going to contribute to a shortage of drivers and that's compounded for flatbed carriers because drivers might be more inclined to go work for a company that, that's hire, hauling vans so they can fly below the radar a little bit, so to speak. Yes, because the cargo related tie down issues are, are penalized so heavily um, I can see a lot of truckers saying, hey, why do I want to get into a, an industry that's going to penalize me and possibly kick me out of the industry just because my flag is in the wrong spot? So on the other hand, for drivers that have a great history of compliance, I'm thinking they're going to, they're going to be worth their weight in gold. Do they stand a benefit from CSA 2010? Yes, uh, it, CSA 2010 could possibly uh, be a real bonus for the good drivers. Uh, Tommy Hodges from the ATA in Dallas again was saying that he expected CSA 2010 to make a type of free agency for drivers. The better drivers are going to be able to demand more for their services because their scores will bring down the scores of the companies that they drive for. And the reverse, of course, is that the bad drivers will bring the scores up and therefore may be unemployable. So you've got good and bad happening. But what they're trying to do, the FMCAS, CSA, is trying to get bad drivers off the road. And in that respect, they're, it's going to work, but it's going to be awful hard on the trucking industry. And because there's such great demand for these elite drivers, they're going to be tempted by, by other carriers. What can a flat deck carrier do to keep them and retain them? Well, there again, um, the average age of uh, truck drivers in, as, in general is getting higher. Um, we're all not as young as we used to be, and we all can't do what we used to do. Um, in order to make and attract these good drivers, what a, a company might want to do is, is invest in a tarping system. Um, the tarping system makes it so much easier to open and close tarp and untarp their load. Um, 
it's a lot safer, they're on the ground, they don't have to climb up on their loads, and it just uh, makes the driver's life easier. So if, if a company invests in good tarping systems, they're going to be able to attract the better drivers, not only because their uh, value to the company is better, but they've got good equipment which makes the driver's life easier, and therefore they'll want to drive for that company. So Lloyd, with CSA 2010 combined with the shortage of drivers and fierce competition for those drivers, do you think we're going to get to the point where tarping systems are, are pretty much the norm in flat deck applications? Yes, I believe so. Um, we mentioned that uh, Tommy Hodges from the ATA had predicted uh, $200,000 200, drivers being eliminated from the trucking driving pool uh, because of CSA 2010. Eric Starks at that same convention he predicted that the driver shortage was going to be about 200,000 before the uh, CSA 2010 even took effect. So he's actually predicting 400,000 wow. shortage. So as you can see, to get drivers, period, and then to get good drivers is just going to become harder and harder and harder. So a lot of these, uh, well, drivers in general are, are getting older. Um, the average age is, is increasing. And it's getting harder and harder for them to throw tarps. So on flat deck truckers, they have to tie things down. They've got to uh, throw tarps. And it's just getting to be too much. I had uh, a driver. He was 82 years old. Came into the shop with his company. And the company said, we want to keep this guy on the road. He's one of our better drivers. But he can't throw tarps anymore. So we need a tarping system. That's going to happen more and more. I've had numerous guys in their 50s and early 60s that are saying I need a tarping system just to stay in the driver's seat and with such a shortage happening uh, companies are going to have to look at that too and say hey if we want drivers because they're getting older they can't do uh, the flatbed anymore if we want them to be our flatbed drivers we're going to need to get into the tarping systems. So Lloyd as we've heard today the implications for CSA 2010 are very far-reaching especially for flat deck carriers and drivers. What are your closing thoughts? Well CSA 2010 is is gonna put a big hardship on the trucking industry but overall I think it's gonna do the trucking industry a world of good. Um, I think the better companies are gonna come through this a lot stronger and the weaker companies are gonna be weeded out. Um, to allow the better companies to do the job they're trained to do and do it even better. Well, thanks, Lloyd. You've presented us with a lot to, today to think about. And if you have questions for Lloyd, he's available right now. You can input your questions in the box that's provided below, and Lloyd's going to be here for the next little while to get to all those questions.